Hello. 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 Hang on, I've just realised that I'm comparing well, now, just not you. Yeah, you're out of shot. Oh. I would like to be in shot as like a stooge. <laughs> I don't want a stooge. Hello, how are you? Um, I'm well, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Um, this is Johnny. Hello. <laughs> this might be the most hectic opening we've and by hectic I mean like scruffy opening. No, oh, no, okay. no. I've watched some of them back. Yeah, oh, yes. <laughs> they've all they've all been like this or worse, actually. What I'd say, Johnny, is if you're gonna be the stooge, it's best if we can set up what the show's meant to be like. Before you cut, it's just a simple comedy thing that they need to know what meant, what meant to be happening. I absolutely okay. understand. Okay, good. Hello, and welcome to the Friday Night Quarantine Show. I'm Johnny Roberts. And I'm Josie Long. Welcome to the Friday Night Quarantine Show. And what a week it's been. I'm sure we can all agree. There's been highs and lows and all, all kinds of news. Yes. In the news this week, um, uh, 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 <laughs> has a new law, which means nothing can happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, even from me on the grave! Yeah, um, and it turns out the pound isn't very nice. Um, uh, Johnny, this you should have interrupted by now. You I missed your I, What I did was I used up all of my, my jokes at that early bit. <laughs> I've got nothing now. Oh, good. Well, um, should we uh, throw over to... Um, how's your week been, Josie? Uh, do you know, very much. Uh, all, of, all of the days were there. Yep. Each one, in turn, took its place. Yep. And then, as evening fell, bleh, and the next came. That's Basically. Beckett. That's Beckett, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> I think I've lost my mind this week. That's what I think has happened to me. Um, <laughs> but I've been pranking you. <laughs> oh, God. That's like a musical. I come in in the night and I pretend I'm a ghost. <laughs> if only I can find the sheets. <laughs> Not like um, Mr. Twit a bit, Johnny. And that's what Mr. Twit does in the books. He he, he pranks Mrs. Mrs. Twit, Twit and cuts, uh, you know, makes her cane shorter and stuff. That is something I think I also, more and more like Mr. Twit. I also glue birds to trees. Huh. Um, but, but unrelated to trying to be like Mr. Twit, it's just a hobby. <laughs> um, um, how's your weekend? How are you? Like birds gluing to adding trees, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, it's been, it's been, um, I've been doing exercise sessions online. Ooh. On Zoom. The fun what? thing is that one of the trainers doesn't turn off the microphones, doesn't mute people, so occasionally he'll just be just about to show how to do a particular thing, and then it will cut to one of the other members of the class going, and then cut back just after he's introduced the thing he was meant to be doing. Uh, so I've, been, I've been running as well. Have you? I've been running. I run um, a couple times a week, four sometimes, oh. uh, sometimes once. So, you know, never three times. Um, and today I had one of the most, the most interesting runs. Um, I live in Hackney with Josie and um, everyone who runs sort of around the area where I run is very fit and hipsterish because of where we live. And there's never, like me, any, you know, big, big, big fat, sweaty men, um, you know, really huffing and puffing. And today... I saw a very large man looking like he was struggling to run. So as he was running towards me, I started waving and going, whoa, keep it up, Tubbs, that sort of thing. And he turned around and started running back the other way. So once again, failed to make a friend. Well, I think in the times of social distancing, he was following, if anything, government advice. Well, he could have said hello. <laughs> no, I don't think the government wants us to say hello. <laughs> um, shall we introduce the house band? Yes, that would be fun. You've had a sneak preview of one of them already. Yes. Some might say, because the other week I was ill, he's, uh, he's really supplanted himself. And <laughs> um, yeah, the house bands are Johnny and the Baptist. This is Johnny. Hello. Paddy, are you there? <laughs> Yo, I'm the other guy that interrupts. <laughs> 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 That's quite charming when he does it, though, isn't he? You can't turn me off camera. <laughs> Give you a taste of your own medicine. <laughs> I'm very um, much um, the Michael Winslow of our group, I think. Oh, I'm the Mike, I'm the Michael Winner of our group. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's true. Luke, Luke's the Michael Gambon of the group, and oh, 
Yeah. Remember all those bloody lines? I hated seeing them in a Pinter. You get it all wrong. Now, um... Luke, you're the you... person who goes to a Pinter play with the script, don't you? No, I've memorised the script ahead of time, <laughs> just <laughs> so I can check. Uh, Paddy, will you will take you... requests for particular sound effects? Oh, sure, man. Yeah, absolutely. Go for it. Hit me. Uh, a, a ruler, um, like, twanging off the side of a desk. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Was, I surprised myself with that. Man having soup. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, that, that was some fantastic soup. Man <laughs> having soup. A, 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 no, hang on. Let me start again. <laughs> oh, it's, it's good soup in the woods today. <laughs> Similar, but I, I, don't know, I like it. I can't fault it. <laughs> a theme tune, haven't you? You've got a new theme tune this week. Yeah, I've rustled something up. Johnny's rustled something up, and um, we went intense and we went hard this week. So uh, if uh, it's it's the worst one yet. Mm. So mm. if uh, stretch, yeah, if Trent's ready to hit it, then um, let's take it away with our new theme tune, which is called th- Theme. Check the mic and make sure it sounds right, boy. It's the place that you hear a lot of stuff. All around town, people trying to get down. <laughs> it's kind of flaky. Yeah. 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 Another banger. Another banger. I actually didn't think it was that... Um, I mean, it's very rotating, but I thought that it was um, interesting. Yeah. I enjoyed much, much like myself, in, ir- irritating and interesting. Yeah. I'm never rude, but I'm often incompetent. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You have to change your pants all the time. Um, <laughs> I, the sound effects, did yeah. you add those to the, the track? Yes, yes. I, 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 added, I added everything to the track. I went through... a. I made some of them. There's uh, there's there's some some Paddy originals in there. Some of them are uh, samples from uh, songs that have no royalty checks. There was uh, <laughs> a queen in there, which was uh, you don't hear often in yeah. songs. Yeah. Uh, so that was exciting. Now, um, last week you did say you would change the lyric of the song, which says that I am grumpy. Ah, yes. Well, we were, we were very, very much going to do that. Yes, yes. So there were there were there, we d- we divided up the, the jobs, jobs uh, this week in that Johnny uh, would change the lyrics about Luke. That was the plan. And I would uh, make the song a hip hop song. That's that was the two jobs that we had to do. Mm. And and, uh, and bear in mind, so your job, Paddy, that was that took you quite a few hours, really, didn't it? Yeah, you had sort of six to seven hours. But uh, but bear in mind, I am going slowly mad, so it's probably only an hour's work. <laughs> and I, I had. A and plan. you had to change one yeah. line of the song, didn't you? Luke, who's grumpy, and I yeah. already knew what I was going to change it to. What, what change- was it? What was it? Luke, who's stinky. Okay. okay. That's a shame. That's a shame for everyone. <laughs> or, 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 you know, could it, it doesn't have to be stinky. It could have been... Um, uh, uh, it was, it was going to be stinky, was it? It was going to be stinky. That was the plan. But it, it didn't... I'm going back to this. Thank you very much. Now we'll move <laughs> to the first act of um, today's show. Um, we've got a lot of acts to get through, so we should chat less... That sounded like you like you were dreading these brilliant people that we've managed to. So you were like, we've got a lot to get no, through. It's going to be an accident. An accident. No, they're brilliant. What I mean is, the less we talk, the more they can. Yes, please. Yeah. Um, pa- Paddy's going to do a little musical introduction yeah, on please. his five seconds, whatever you want. Um, should we introduce who it is before you do yeah. the introduction? Uh, yes. Uh, if yeah, you introduce, but also Johnny, could you quickly tell me what song I'm playing? Uh, I don't know. Oh, great. Yeah. All right. <laughs> cool. Fleetwood Mac, it is. <laughs> yeah. Maybe 
Um, well, uh, oh sorry, Al here. If you're if you're still with us, if you could turn on your camera and oh, microphone, yes, and you've microphone. not been responding to the tech. Very uh, nice. Hello. <laughs> hey. hey. Hello. Hello. Uh, I've been hiding my time. <laughs> um, right. And I see right. you've got your costume hung up behind you. I have an elegant sort of leopard print dress that I shall be emerging into for the encore. <laughs> when you get, when you get entering from the top or the or the bottom. <laughs> uh, I've, I've got an elaborate system of shoots. Uh, you don't hear the word shoot enough. Uh, mostly for good reasons. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's our hom- homonym. Is it homonym? Homophobe. What's a homonym? A homonym. A homonym, homonym sounds, uh, means the same. No, means different thing, but sounds the same. For example, uh, boat. But isn't that a homophone? I thought that was a boat. homophone. Boat and boat. And boat. Here, sorry for derailing your introduction. Yeah. Right, guys, I'll see it. It's those classic things. It's those classic things make it worth it that our industry has collapsed. (laughs) Listen, it's wonderful to have absolutely no idea when we can possibly do anything again. (laughs) Fresh as a daisy. And now, in a return to normality, introducing Ahir Shah with his favourite song, It's the Chain. (laughs) (laughs) Running in the shed. (laughs) <laughs> Chain. Horrible. Thank you, Paddy. I hated that. Uh, it's, uh, really, uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, whoever is out there, I may well just be speaking to these people who have cast an elaborate prank on me. Uh, that's slightly what I do believe. Uh, it's a joy to have logged off the day's work Zooms and go to the later social, somehow more stressful Zooms uh, that define all of our times. Uh, I, I feel very odd at the moment. Josie uh, stated earlier that each day has taken its place and each day has taken its turn. For me, each day has taken its toll. Uh, that's very much the situation that I feel that I'm in. Um, at the moment, I don't really know what the place for comedy. I don't know what the place for comedy is in a world where the president of the United States says that he was only joking when he told people to drink bleach to cure the pandemic that we're in. I don't know if that's the material that's expected from us now. Uh, if so, uh, I fear that I'm not going to have much space in this brave new world of ours. You know, I, I, I suppose. <laughs> I'm looking forward to a weekend, I guess, the weekend now. The only thing that distinguishes weeks from weekends now is that during the weekends, my girlfriend and I sit on the sofa and she plays Animal Crossing while I constantly refresh death figures. Uh, that's basically uh, the world that we've got into. Uh, and I think that I want to get into Animal Crossing uh, in some manner of speaking because it would be a good preview for the turnip-based economy that we're all going to be living in fairly shortly. Uh, Certainly, I felt as though when the price of West Texas Intermediate hit minus $37 a barrel, uh, everything that she was doing with Tom Nook suddenly made a lot more sense uh, than the things that I uh, thought uh, the world consisted of. I don't know. I don't know anymore. Do you know what I mean? Every every sort of uh, thing that every kind of rationality seemed based on has thrown itself out of the window, you know? Just the fact that, oh, yes, of course, we can no longer go to a town in Oklahoma in order to collect a thousand barrels of oil. Why were we doing that anyway? What? In what, in what world does... I never want to visit Oklahoma, ever. I'm convinced it doesn't exist, even though there's a musical, and I'm furious about that fact as well. This is so weird without laughter, and yet oddly redolent of tour shows that I have done in Aylesbury, Bedford, uh, and many other places in the commuter belt, all of which I hope no longer exist. Uh, certainly, um, I can't see them outside of my window, therefore I don't think that they exist. I no longer think that North London exists, which is a shame because my parents live there and I've always liked them. Um, Don't know, man. Don't know what to trust. Don't know what to believe. You look at official figures coming out from all around the world and you realize that the entire thing was predicated on initially being able to trust the Communist Party of China, although historically they have been so brazen that one day they may just come out and be like, oh, you met the statistics for coronavirus. Sorry, um, we thought you were asking how many people signed up to Tidal. 
that, uh, that, that was the sort of thing that we were uh, trying to get on board with. I don't know. I, don't know. I, I did an entire stand-up show about uncertainty in 2019, and now my uncertainty uh, feels as though it was always very minuscule compared to the reality, you know? I always tried to contrast myself with my father. My father, I think, is the most certain person I knew, right? My father has a cast-iron political ideology that he is convinced is the right way for the entire world to move forward. Uh, he was married to the only woman who he's ever been with, and he's like, this is my wife, these are my children, that just is the case until I die. And when he does die, he's not really that fast because he genuinely thinks he's going to be reincarnated as a sparrow or some shit, right? Hinduism, curse. And... At the time I wrote the show, I was a single atheist who was actively considering the Lib Dems. Do you know what I mean? Like, it felt like a very uncertain place to be, and yet that seemed, if anything, like meager preparation for the situation we find ourselves in now. And I don't know how to react. I don't know how to react emotionally, intellectually, politically. How do I react politically, you know? Like, I, I was very, very left-wing when I was at university, largely because that's the last time I've been uncomplicatedly correct about everything. Uh, you know, I spent a brief amount of time outside of institutions and went, oh, it's almost immediately too messy for dogma. How annoying. Right? But yeah, I, I feel as though, increasingly, I feel as though all I can really do, and this lockdown has really so sort of emphasize that is all I can really do look after my bit. Do you know what I mean? Is that all a person can really do? You look after your bit. You hope that everyone looks after their bit and hopefully collectively we can somehow create a better bit. And I think it's why people get more right wing as they get older. You know, it makes total sense. I don't judge anyone for it because it is such a short step from maybe I can only really look after my bit to get off my bit. I. I I'm taking control of this bit. I'm taking back control of this bit. I'd have 350 million quid a week if it weren't for you packies on my bit. No. That, as a statement, is odd when you are the only person audible in a room. Very much. It is really... Uh, shown me how much the use of racial epithets in my comedy was conditional on a social response. Uh, otherwise, muttering it to myself as I am, I feel merely like what Nigel Farage presumably is uh, at the moment. I feel as though I have spoken for almost seven minutes. Sure. Um, now I'm going to tell you a story in order to close that I'm not allowed to do in stand-up because the person who it's about has banned me from doing it in stand-up. But I mentioned Nigel Farage, and so I want to tell my Nigel Farage story. I was once at a wedding uh, where the groom uh, at the time worked for UKIP. And so uh, this is many years ago. And so Nigel Farage was in attendance uh, at this wedding. Uh, and it was uh, one of these sort of country houses where uh, they, they have to keep the door slightly propped open because otherwise it locks behind you. And at the time, I used to smoke cigarettes. So I went outside and smoked a cigarette and I found myself standing next to Nigel Farage. Uh, it was just there. And, you know, we engaged in our cigarette pleasantries and everything and a little nod and what have you. And uh, he finished his before I finished mine. Uh, and so he went back into the building, but clearly uh, hadn't heard that you had to leave the door slightly ajar uh, in order to let other people in. So the door slammed uh, behind him and I had to text the wedding WhatsApp thread saying, guys, you're going to think I'm joking, but please invite me back in. The leader of UKIP just slammed the door in my face and I'm the only non-white attendee of this wedding. Um, that is a true story. And will never be told. I promise never to tell it on stage uh, because uh, it's um, the, the wedding was uh, my uh, friend's mum marrying his now stepdad. Uh, and I'm not allowed. To, that friend uh, said I wasn't allowed to tell the story on stage, even though it's objectively hilarious uh, because it's about his family, which is fair enough. Um, but right now I am not on a stage. <laughs> and so I am able to tell it uh, in front of you. And doesn't it just feel as though a great weight has been lifted? Uh, <laughs> An absolute, oh, absolute foolproof loophole. There's nothing he can do. <laughs> yeah. It's a cliffhanger, Sean. It's a cliffhanger. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
that was uh, that that was surprisingly not that weird. <laughs> What's weird is I find it's about ten percent as satisfying as being on stage, and it's really, really made me appreciate why all YouTubers are so toxic and right wing because <laughs> they think that they're performers, but they're like, why isn't this good? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I re really love speaking in front of people. If only there were people. <laughs> um, also, if you think that all you can do politically is just look after your bit. Wait until you have kids, because all you'll be doing is sweeping up food that the baby has chewed and then spat out <laughs> all over your fucking bit. And that's all your life is. It's the same fucking bit. And before you swept up, the baby's put some other shit on the bit. Thank you haven't even got Christ. a bit anymore. <laughs> been a double act with Johnny Donahoe for ten years. <laughs> <laughs> I live with him and the baby. I live with him, I do. I live with him. <laughs> um... Thank you so much for doing that, Arhu. It's, oh, it's great to see you. It's great to hear you chat. Pleasure to see you all and uh, <laughs> stay well. Yeah, oh. see you, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What pleasure. What pleasure. We also should uh, do admin, which is that we do have. Please don't put cheesecake. Oh, we we do have um, a tip jar, which if you do have anything to contribute, if you don't, do not worry. Do not even worry yourself about it. Don't worry. Like, absolutely, but like. We're excited to get to do this. We're glad um, of it. We are glad of it. We really, really are. Am I interrupting you in a way that you're finding unhelpful? Yes. And but if you yeah, um, um, if you if do, you do uh, basically we're raising money for uh, that we can pull for all the different artists. Well, our entire industry has been destroyed, but not just that. There are venues that were already kind of eking out a bit of a living, and that we want to try and support as well. And as, as you can see from my background dancers, it's fun as well <laughs> now i think luke john luke yes i think it's me next isn't it yes i'm gonna have to go off because uh, i've got to get the next guest out of a hole oh okay perfect um so guess just next one guest yeah, uh, we, we, uh, yes no there's no yes the next guest is wow your friend, friend and mine you think she's fantastic i agree um, but rarely in front of her because you. But please put your hands together as Paddy introduces to the screen Josie Long. There you go. Intro Star Wars, Star Trek. Oh, could have could have got in trouble there. I'm in the internet. Here we go. Love you, Josie. Have fun set. Bye. Thank you. Do you know? Fun fact about me: I've never ever seen Star Trek, any of it, or Harry Potter. Who am I? What? What century do I live in? I mean, who even knows these days? Um, hello, it's nice to be chatting. I wish that I were more productive in all of this. I wish that I were not so absolutely terrified and disillusioned at this time with uh, the people who might be supposedly helping us and moving on from this in the future. As it stands, mum has been really leaning on a little crutch called a glass of vino. Uh, there's nothing there. I can't bear the thought of drinking because I'm doing the night. <laughs> um, I hope you're all doing all right. I hope you're all well. I don't know what new things you're doing with your time. When I have a little bit of time off, all I do is play teenagers from around the world on chess.com. And all I do is lose to them over and over again. And sometimes I win by chance. And when I do win, I get straight in the chat box and I type, lol. <laughs> that shows them. I've been, chess.com is the only thing that makes sense to me at the moment. It's so clear and pure and takes my mind away. And I feel like I've been spending all week getting my ranking, which was like 600, which apparently is rubbish. And I got it all the way up to 700. And then today, I think there's like a lot of progesterone going on today. And it, it's gone straight back down to 600 in one day. I pissed it all away. And it's like the worst, saddest form of gambling. Because it's not like when you gamble, the um, croupier is like, and you're thick. That's what chess.com does to me. And I like at the end of it, it gives you a little one line assessment of how you did. 
and I'm basically desperate for the approval of the chess.com AI as it judges me after each game. Because if you do well, it will say things like, a great win. You were never really in trouble. Or like, a wild game, but you came out on top. And even though I know it's an AI, I'm like, <laughs> thank you. You saw it. You saw me and you understood. And like today, it was so depressing. It was like, that was the best game you played today. That was a battle, but your opponent outclassed you the whole time. I've watched you all day. I watch you sleep. Drink the sif. Heal yourself. Terrifying. But, you know, that's how it goes. I honestly, um, my daughter has been saying some very, um, very cute stuff this week. Thank fuck, because there's nothing else in my life. <laughs> she, um, she, uh, she has reached uh, a point now in lockdown where she's so good at climbing up on dangerous shit and has such a natural ability to find things that I do not want her to find that she found a sewing kit that isn't mine or Johnny's. I don't even know where she fucking, who, who, who creates the sewing kit from the ether. She found this sewing kit while I had, I was cooking her breakfast. I wasn't sitting about. I was cooking her breakfast. In the breakfast time, she ripped open the sewing kit, shoved her mouth full of safety pins. So I turned back around, there's needles everywhere. I t- and I was like, what are you doing? And then just, ah. Monster, a little tiny grinning monster with no reason to her. Yesterday, she learned how to open the front gate and walk out alone into the street. I cannot bear it. And then this morning, so she did something very cute, which was I tried to put her to bed yesterday. And as she was going to, I, I put her down. And I was lying next to her and saying, "Okay, it's sleepy time. And she went, yes, yes, sleepy time. And then two seconds later, she went, wake up, mummy, it's morning. And I was like, you little fuck. How did you know? (laughs) You've got me. Um, And this is the thing she did. Anyway, I'm sorry I don't have much to talk about this week. I wish I were a better person, but I thrive on praise, the outdoors and success. (laughs) Three things that I am not thriving on. Um, This. So. We were watching Boss Baby, the animated series. Is it as good as the film? No, no, it's nowhere near as good as the film. Oh, well, I suppose it can't be that long. Oh, yeah, it's just three series of half an hour for every single episode. Um, She saw this character on Boss Baby, this boy bully, eight-year-old boy bully. She pointed at it and she said, Mummy! And the worst part is, I mean, I get it. I get it. That's the worst part. And it's like, I guess I've reached this point. I turned 38 last week. And yeah, this is all it is. If I die, that will be on the front page of chortle.com. That'll be it. If I die, that'll be the sole obituary. Just that with a wild game, but you were outclassed. Very sad. Very sad. Look at this. It looks like me, but me and like what I wish I didn't look like. So there you go. That's all I have to say this week. I'm sorry it's not more or better, but that's like life, really, isn't it? Could I say? Yeah. Which no. is. Oh. <laughs> well, <even laughs> like, Do you think look, this looks like me, Jimmy? No, it doesn't look anything like you. It does look a bit like me. No. Which one? Well, obviously the one that looks like me with like the wide jaw and the. F- it looks like we've gone into Leicester Square, yeah. and you said to a guy there, "Draw a caricature of my partner." Do you think the other one looks like me? No. Okay. Well, I don't think either of them look like me. <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> Welcome back, um, John Luke. Oh no, John Luke Roberts it is gone. Actually, I'm I was say I I praise you. I'm trying to praise you as much as I can, and uh, his, his, I thought it was a lovely set. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Um, I thought it was well constructed. Uh, I don't think it could have been better. <laughs> that was like you were a generous judge on um, Britain's Got Talent. Yeah, <laughs> that's, uh, that's what I'm trying to. Say. So, uh, I it now befalls me to welcome into the room an absolutely horrible old crone, absolutely terrifying old crone, uh, who for some reason has come back. Uh, and basically, 
<laughs> Hello, Crone. How are you? Oh, terrible, terrible old Crone. I am. Yes, a terrible old Crone. Pop out. I haven't got the um, the old what's it yet, but I've been very safely isolated with my little old. Been right up, nestled in my old. Uh, oh, I'm glad you've been self isolating because well, you must be over I seventy. Myself, oh, very, very vigorously. Um, I, I would. Um, I, I, I um. <laughs> I've been doing some, um, I've been doing some con, uh, and uh, what's she called? Marie Condoing. I've Marie Condoed. So, oh, what? what have you got rid of? Well, you see, I've got lots of things up in the hole, and uh, it's, uh, too many things. And as a nice time to look at the things in the hole, you know, is this bringing me a great amount of pleasure in the hole? So I hold it up, and I go, oh, does this, or do I like this? Does this make me feel ooh, ooh, lovely? And um, then I, I decide whether to get So I took, um, I've got one, uh, uh, first of all, picked up my tit. And I went, um, should I keep my t-? And I thought, I will keep that. Yes, I will keep that. And then I thought, well, well how is this one making me mad? The other one. I decided to keep both of those tits. Um, oh. get rid of the rest. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the those ones didn't now, spark joy, did they? No, they didn't spark anything at all, except for a vague sense of t- 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 uh, titfulness. Mm. Yeah. Now, I, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, old bad right. news, old crane, but... A lot of people online have been very insulting to you. What? They're horrible. What an horrible thing for people to do to a terrible old crown. Well, <laughs> brace yourself, because it gets worse. Matt Robotham says that he heard you were seen sunbathing nude in breach of quarantine, and the whole park got turned into statues, with Return to Oz style. Well, that, I mean, to be fair, that was, that was me. And that did happen. But uh, I think it's very odd. He thinks that's insulting rather than a wonderful display of my um, my feminine power. And I'd like to say to Matt, um, a little curse, I think. A little curse. Mm-hmm. Hey, ye discover, ye have a rash on your bottom and it is shaped in exactly the shape of Michael Gove's profile. And it keeps growing and growing and growing until it meets itself around the other end and you're all rash. And then your bum says, no. Wow, I mean, it sounds a, a very sad, a, a very sad curse, and I and I hope Matt has time to reflect on his behaviour. Yeah. Now, James at All My Vinyl said that he heard that the terrible old crone thinks that leisure is the best. Oh, well. <laughs> Ooh, a Brit pop based insult? I didn't think anyone who made Brit pop based insults anymore. Well, my nose has got all waggly and he's getting a curse as well. What's his name? Uh, just James. Just James. James, may ye discover that when ye look in the mirror one day, ye see not your reflection, but simply the reflection of another mirror. And you realise you've been turned into a mirror and people will always gaze at you to look at themselves. Big vain people come up and look at themselves and you'll have to put up with it. And you'll never be able to see yourself and you'll feel very sad. Oh, well, I wouldn't like to be James right now. I'll tell you that for free. That now, for Robert, free. now, Robert Wells has said that he has heard that Terrible Old Crone has got 17,649 unread emails in their... Well, it is nonsense, of course. I don't have an inbox. I communicate purely by um, by headless crows. I bite their head off uh, and then write a method message in the inbox and throw it out on the street and note that the right person walks past and sees it. Um, so I would say to Robert, may ye discover when ye buy an album by Kanye West that it is filled not with his music, but his opinions. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, unbearable. Bad luck to that. Bad now, luck to that. Now, Dr. J. Casimir says, terrible old crone, you remind me of the kind of dingbat that says bless you to strangers that sneeze in public. That's a bit harsh. As if you really believe a deity is listening out for sneezes and keeping track of whether or not the sneezer is blessed. Well, even I it's disagree, old, old crone, but uh, what do you think? Well, it comes, of course, from the Romans who thought it was um, wicked spirits leaving the body. But we'll leave that by the side and I will say, may ye, doctor, discover that whenever ye buy an album by Ed Sheeran, that it is filled with his music. <laughs> well, Ingrid says, terrible old crone, I hear you secretly make YouTube, make videos. YouTube videos about popular space fantasy films. Ooh. I don't, I don't get the reference, but it sounds pretty mean. Oh. <laughs> All right, well, I'll do a little curse for you. May ye discover 
that ye become a whale. But ye transform into a wolf, not when ye see the moon, but when ye see a therapist. <laughs> That's leaving you unable to ever truly heal that. Very nice, very nice. Leah says, oh, one um, more. Hang on, we've got a few more. Well, I'll get back in the old fairly shortly, I think. OK, I'm going to choose my favourite one. Hang on. All right. Wait there. OK. Wait there. Oh, my God, some of these are terrible. Oh, I like this one. This is my absolute favourite. Okay. Clap aboard, Dan. Terrible old crone. Your stage costume is unfit for swimming. And your swimming costume is unfit for the stage. <laughs> <laughs> well, my swimming costume is unfit for the stage, of course, because it's just, it's two rags and a sticking plaster. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't wear that on stage, no, but I'll give him a little curse anyway, I'll give him a curse. May he discover that whenever you really want to sneeze, you are near a lighthouse. And so you, you look at it and you think, oh, great, this light's going to make me, it's going to make me, and then it turns around. And then you go, um, oh, I'm a stealing <laughs> right, I'm going to go back up the hole. Um, well, but, look after yourself. Remember to stay two metres apart from any other crones. Oh, no one, no crones are coming near my hole, I can tell you that. I'll stop, I'll give them a piece of my mind if I do. Terrible crone, terrible crone, terrible crone. Wow, so that was the terrible old crone, and she was... I think not holding back this no, week. Not holding back. Not at holding all. back at all. You can, can, can I be back in? Yeah. <laughs> um, I enjoyed. I enjoyed that. I, my worry is that um, John Luke Roberts missed the whole thing. Yeah, I think he did. It's a real shame. John no, Luke, what is the whole thing? It's what the terrible old crone was here. The crone was here. Um, um, I always miss the terrible old crone. Uh, she and was, was really very sad. funny. Yeah, she was very funny. And she was very, very acerbic. Mm. Well, I'm, I'm sure, sure she was copying your material. Sorry. Sorry? I think she's copying your material, though. Really? Yeah, she's got a very similar style, but it's, it's oh. a bit more old. Oh, well, a bit chromious. Yeah. Paddy, uh, do you have a, do you have a little musical sting for our next guest? Um, yes, I can do. Um, Luke, who's the next guest? Have a musical The Police as well. <laughs> Would you... <laughs> uh. Um, I could do I could do some message in a bottle to introduce our next guest. If you say if you say their name, I'll then I'll then hit you know some. Um, he's absolutely, oh. one Wait. of my oh he's absolutely one of my favourite comedians favorite in the whole world in the whole world and uh, a lovely man and it's really really exciting to have him on the show. Welcome to your screens, Nathaniel Metcalf. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Message in a bottle. There you go. Yeah, I like. Thank you. <laughs> That's lovely. That I'm not used to having a musical accompaniment. It's a strange. It's a strange place to be now because I'm, I'm. I've been enjoying the show, and it's not. Well, I think my favourite bit is it's not often you you hear a reference to Michael Winslow. It's always nice to hear that. I mean, um, Thanks, Thanks. I've also I've also never never seen or read any of the Harry Potters. Never. It's me and you, Josie. See, I think the difference is, though, I think people imagine I would have. I think they think I'm a type that will be like, he knows about it. don't know anything about it, apart from what I've picked up. I've heard about, I've heard about Quidditch. I've heard about it. I've heard about it. It's like um, rounders or something, but on broomsticks. It's something like that. Isn't it? I've heard about, I know about it. There's him. There's um, Red Haired Boy. Emma Watson. And um, Gary Oldman. And um, that's that's Harry Potter. <laughs> I'm all about it. I'm a big fan. I'm gonna. I will get around to it. I'm not. I'm not avoiding it. I'm not. I'm not too good for it or anything. I, I, I'm definitely not too good. I mean, I think if anything, I think I'm probably worse than it. It's probably I'll I'll, I'll get into it at some point. Um, it's quite odd doing this gig as well because it, 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 like it's one of the few gigs I've ever done where I think I've not only am I sat down, I'm also cross legged. Um, which feels very odd. I don't know, maybe I will uncross my... No, it's worse. I'll cross them back again. Right. Well, it's... I hear we're saying it's a really odd time to be doing comedy, and I don't really know what people want. Do they, people want escapism, or do they want people to talk about things? 
And, you know, and, and traditionally, I don't think I've been the best person served to talk about current events, but, but I am living through it. And I, if anything, I think I'm much more of a shut in. I don't really take advantage of going for my walks. I might go out of the garden a bit and have a little bit of walk around, but I very rarely go out. I'm going out about once a week to do shopping and I find it quite, quite a scary place. And, um, there's been lots of debate about whether people should or shouldn't wear masks. And I haven't been wearing a mask. And I think if I'm honest, it's out of vanity. I don't think I want to be someone who wears a mask. And I think partly that's, that is vanity. But otherwise, I think because the world is scary and feels a bit like post apocalyptic already, it's scarier to leave the house and see people that look like they're extras from Fury Road. And the, but, but I think maybe like, but it occurred to me that in the debate of whether you should or shouldn't wear masks, you probably should. Because the other great thing about a face mask is if you wear one, it's also a disguise. So no one will ever know that it's you. It's like the perfect crime. Um, I was also I think now as well, it's, there's lots of misinformation. And I guess more often than than usual, you've got to worry about um, like. Fake news has been a big thing, of course, and there's lots of people saying things about it. And you've got a, and I think I think I'm pretty good at actually distinguishing between fake news and real news. I don't feel feel, feel like I'm in that age bracket where I might find it difficult. Um, but I was struck last week, last Tuesday the 14th. I'm sure you saw this, where um, on uh, this morning Alice Beer was discussing uh, the the conspiracy theory that 5G could lead to coronavirus. There was some sort of connection. Of course, that wasn't true. And she was trying to debunk it on this morning. But Eamon Holmes said, what I don't accept is mainstream media immediately slapping that down as not true when they don't know it's not true. Uh, It's very easy to say it's not because it suits the state narrative. And I, well, two interesting points about this is the first one that struck me was that I love the idea that Eamon Holmes doesn't believe this morning is part of the mainstream media. It's on ITV one. He's not. He thinks he's like um, Christian Slater in Pump Up the Volume, which is, is probably a, a poor reference point for a film that came out 31 years ago. He thinks he's happy Harry Hardon. And he's distributing some uh, dangerous pirate news to the world. He doesn't seem to realise that he's on ITV ones this morning. And of course, the next day he got in a bit of trouble and he had to like apologise the next day. And he said the next day, he said, both Alice Beer and I agreed in a discussion on this very programme on fake news that it's not true. And there is no connection between the present national health emergency and 5G. And to suggest otherwise would be wrong and indeed could be dangerous. Okay, but then two days later, when he was uh, it was interviewing some carers with his wife, uh, uh, Ruth Langsford, on on Thursday, the 16th. And at the end of the interview, the two carers, he said, I want you to know that when Ruth and I are banging tonight, we'll be thinking of you guys. Now, I believe, I believe that what he meant when he said that was that when he's banging his pots and pans with his wife for the clap for the NHS, that he'll be thinking about all of the great work that those carers are doing. But it's very easy for me to say that because it very much suits Eamon Holmes' narrative. But it's very it's impossible, really, to, to say exactly what he meant by that. Um, I, I can't believe it, that I have done six mins, 16 seconds. And I think that that'll probably do. <laughs> um, <laughs> I really loved it. Also, I had no idea that he said that we'll be thinking of you when we're banging. banging. <laughs> <laughs> that was a forensic takedown. Uh, it was forensic. It's good to finally have some opposition. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Met, Metcalf for PM. Thank you. Oh, uh, evenings. <laughs> Gives me something to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh,
Should I bid you adieu? Yes. Um, I, I, well, yeah, it's been lovely having you, but um, yes. I'll be yeah. watching. No worry, I'll be watching. Oh yeah. But, oh. Oh, yeah. but I'll be. I'll still be. Here. Bless you. <laughs> Oh, oh, bless you, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. What actually going to be <laughs> coming down to see whether you bless me or not? Come on, guys. Actually, it's an old Roman tradition. <laughs> tradition. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now we got one more final guest, and yeah, another one of my favourite people to gig with and to be around in general. She is not a comedian. Oh no! But I do think she's got her own little sense of humour. She has a she has a small but fiercely loyal fan base of around <laughs> the, um, mainly Australian which is a shame for her at the moment I think um, I consider her a dear friend and she's finally in a situation where she does reply to my text messages because she has nothing else to do <laughs> this is like a mini roast of her I, and all I wanted was just to say how good oh is it Baptist first then not oh there's, okay there's a lot of okay. there's a lot of chat going on so actually we look Yesterday's been messy from this end, but it's this really that's caused the mess. We have to. We have Johnny to. Johnny Baptist Grace is doing the song, again. and then Grace is doing the song. What, why are we doing it that way around? That's what Trent said. Oh, so we're not a high, obviously. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Fair okay. <laughs> so without any further ado, it's Johnny and the Baptist. Well, see, the problem is, is we were going to spend Grace's set deciding which song to do. Oh, we always consider the nadir of a show. Yes. <laughs> I'll make sure it gets good to really lower everyone's expectations. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm all right, dude. I'm okay. Um, I'm I, I'm delighted with the adrenaline from uh from not thinking we were doing a song this week, and it's all just hit me. It's all just <laughs> here we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. How 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 are you doing, Johnny? I've missed you. I've I I'd love to say the same. Yeah, but uh, we are the hype. <laughs> no, I have. I've missed you terribly. It's a real shame. I'm used to seeing you every day. Yeah. Um, and it's. Uh, that uh, it's not, uh, so it's not, so I miss you in a, in a very real way. Mm. And I'm also very aware of it, It's become very clear to me that there are a lot of things I can't do yeah. that you do yeah, for yeah. me. Like, like vice versa as well. But like, yeah. Let's I chat more that. singing. Let's chat more singing. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, have you got cool. your guitar? <laughs> uh, I've got my guitar. Um, have you got a song that's able nope, to be done? I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm not, we're not, not ready at all. Not ready. Oh, thought cool, after right, race, cool, but, cool, uh, it's cool, been very cool, stressful. Cool. <laughs> um, shall we, uh, we'll, we'll do a little short song. Yeah. Um, this is a Spanish song um, that we're an enormous uh, fan oh, of. Fuck. Yeah. All right. And, um, it's um, it, it, it's very short. Yeah. Okay. Um, is it what I think it is? I won't sing, so it won't go weird. Okay. <laughs> Sara mismo No Hablo Espanol It's a lovely, lovely, lovely It's a bit of fun, isn't it? It's a bit of Always a pleasure, always a pleasure I wonder how close to being in the same time we were this week I think it was worse this week Really? <laughs> <laughs> And now it was, <laughs> Trent, Trent, Trent. It was. Trent. Cool. good shit. Give a shout out to our producer Trent, who has produced over fifty shows so far it, since the lockdown as part of uh, Cosmic Shambles Stay at Home Festival. Incredible, incredible work, uh, just to sort of help everyone get through this. And it's definitely, definitely even been a lifeline for us as yes. performers. So, and um, thank you so much. Also, I want to say. I'm doing a um, show tomorrow night, uh, no, Sunday night at 9pm as a streaming show uh, of my stand-up show that I was supposed to be touring at the moment. And I was supposed to be in Sydney, Australia, but I'm not going to be there. So I'm doing it at 9pm if there's anyone who wants to in Australia watch something early in the morning. Like that'll work mm. um uh and also we do have a, a reminder about the tip jar because why not a eh? uh, now and and i think that what you meant to say is you don't feel obligated to give you know 
more than 10, 15, 20 pounds. Uh, Don't feel uh, obligated to give more than 50 grand. 50 if grand. You give 50, oh, God, I saw the most horrific video on Twitter, which was this woman who's a Twitch streamer. And she was going, if you don't have five pounds, you've got five dollars, you've got five dollars. I couldn't believe it. But I thought, that's how to make the bucks. So listen. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> now we have. Um, oh, can I say one last thing? Yes. Before we, so uh, I, I know I've been reading out uh, uh um, texts from my sister on the show most weeks. Um, this week she said you were pretty close to being in time, Paddy Ali. So that's all right. She shouts that at our gigs as well. She so. does. She does. <laughs> <laughs> that's turned up five minutes late. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> A lot of fun. So, ladies and gentlemen, everybody watching, uh, please, please welcome into the chat. Grace, Petrie, luck. Yeah! <laughs> okay. Am I on? Well, um, Paddy's, Paddy's going to do a little intro for you. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I fucked it all. Sorry, I fucked it all. Oh, no, you Don't didn't. Worry, I, all right, I'm going to do, I'm going to do Friends. Uh, all right. So no one told you Grace was going to be on the show. <laughs> Bye, Petrie. Love you. <laughs> and that works on so many levels because they were told twice that I was going to be on the show. There what? you go. Nailed it. <laughs> um, uh, can you hear the old guitar all right, guys? Cool. I've got, an, I've got a very uh, uh, like impressive technical setup with very expensive microphones, but it's set up in the other side of the house away from the Wi-Fi, so either I can connect you or I can sound good. Very much like in my actual shows in real life. Um, <laughs> so I wrote a song about the... Um, do you know what, guys? I wrote a song about the fucking plague. I wrote a song about lockdown. So I'm going to bloody sing that for you, I guess. This is, this is something new. Um, and it doesn't have a name yet. But um, it's Friday night. I'm feeling crazy. I've had... Uh, you know, five sixths of a Peroni, and uh, you know the the, ni the night is young, is what I'm saying. Mm. And yeah, doesn't it just feel very unhinged to sit in your front room saying that to yourself? Um. Anyway, it goes like this. Yeah. 
Sorry, it is actually meant to be funny. <laughs> it's actually meant to be funny. So <laughs> that was wonderful. That was fucking brilliant. That was a wonderful, 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 wonderful performance. Oh. But unfortunately, you've not won the prize. <laughs> It's all day. I could do this all day and all night. Um, oh, I loved it. How wonderful that you've written that. Um, oh, the fact you said, imagine being able to make that. No. Yeah, not bad, isn't it? Yeah. I'm just <laughs> doing this all day. Hello! So, I mean, you know, <laughs> we've all got a skill set, Grace. We have, we have. You're, you're building the minds of tomorrow. Paddy's got his, uh, his, <laughs> I enjoyed the Grace team sheet very much. It was just like, oh, it's just reminding me about feeling all nostalgic, <laughs> about feeling all nostalgic and homophobic. Well, <laughs> I, I, um, I really do like your quarantine haircut. I really do. Fun? It's cute. Oh, sure. Well, do you know what? You can tell that to my mum because she doesn't. Any <laughs> 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 old haircut. Happy to, mate. Happy to. Poor old John Luke's not been able to get a word in her trays. I'm sorry. I'm been sorry. Trying, been trying. What was that, Luke? Well. <laughs> Well, I was just going to say, it's not, to prove the value of live comedy, it doesn't really help when the best you put on, like, a <laughs> lovely song at the end. We've ruined it all. We've <laughs> praised it. I should have the bin on. <laughs> Grace, it's humorless performance. <laughs> oh, Grace, that was so brilliant. I love you so much, and uh, that made me very tearful. Mm, me uh, too. Absolutely amazing. Um, that's how you win at Edinburgh, you just to see a song at the end. That's what Trent said. Oh, Very smart, so if only I'd known. That's what Johnny and I do. Roll out one about the dead, Mum. Ask her out. <laughs> how are you doing, Mum? Still dead. <laughs> well, if I do a song about your dead, Mum, it's in poor taste. <laughs> oh, well, we all went there. Uh, <laughs> That's the show. I tell you what, when I'm a mum singing a song, everyone has a good time. <laughs> we all went there, there. But but your mum's not coming back. So. Um. Oh golly, Luke, who's on next week's show? I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> like it. No, no, Luke, 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 not coming back. <laughs> Okay, right. Here's what we're going to do now. We're going to stop this. Because we all think we're just here. But this is the internet. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Well, look. And the internet is worse than the stage. Because that's what you like on the stage. I think if you've got a dead parent, you can make jokes about Paddy having one too. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh. Um, uh, before we go, Luke, who's on next week's show? Uh, I think it's... I've, 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 uh, it's called Barbara Nice. And siblings, I think. And siblings! But weirdly, none of us. <laughs> so, we'll see how that goes. Well, I mean, who knows? The third one. I just haven't got the list in front of me, but it's, we've got lovely um, line-ups. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and, and, what, who's on your, you're doing a show with Robin in the morning, Josie. 
Um, so, no, the weekend he is doing science shows, which I don't give a shit about. <laughs> 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 science shows for kids uh, with Brian Cox, his, but his other partner who takes him on a reader tour as well. Great. You he also do. doesn't think as much about politics as me. You two did that <laughs> tour of all the <laughs> arena shops. He <laughs> <laughs> did. Which I was on a poster of a girl playing tennis when I was something. It was a little bit risque. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> but I'm, but streaming, I'm my, streaming my show on Sunday night at 9 p.m. Twitch dot TV slash Josie underscore long or on this very link. Um, oh, and next week we're doing our morning every show day at 10 a.m. We have some fantastic guests. Um, we have uh, Marcus Bridgestock and Rachel Mark Paris. Gatiss. Mark Gatiss. Uh, we have j- so many great people. But uh, Dr. Carl. We Dr. Carl. Basically, always, always have a guest who is interesting, fun, and entertaining. Come along and watch. Peter Ebden, former world champion snooker player. Yeah. We don't have. We don't have him. Benjamin Disraeli's on it this. Benjamin <laughs> Disraeli. <laughs> I'm more of a Gladstone fan. I don't know. I don't know. Well, you would be because Gladstone was a liberal and uh, and and Disraeli was a Tory. Good on me. Oh. And then we're handing the network over to Jan Moyer. <laughs> <laughs> Poor so. Trent is pulling out his hair. <laughs> so much, uh, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, remember, there's a tips jar if you want it, and you can follow all of these acts on social media when they've probably got personal tip jars too. Um, have a lovely weekend. Stay safe. Goodbye from me, and goodbye from all of us. Good night. Bye. Bye.